What's up guys, Court Order here, out today at this incredible complex. And Doug, not only was it the very first permission that I ever got years and years ago, but the house right next door, Doug's cousin bought. So we're not only gonna do this house, but we're gonna do that house. And it backs up to the river where Washington crossed not far from here, hoping for an incredible day. Me, Dog Tag Doug, Mexican Doug, Jane Fond Doug, Rich Van Winkle, Musket Ball Matt, and special guests all the way down from NYC, Merrill, from metal detecting NYC. I feel like I've died and gone to heaven. I hope we get a piece of heaven. I would take purgatory. <laughs> so it's gonna be a great day. We're gonna see how we do back in the first dig. See you guys soon. Later. All right, we are starting off in the backyard of one of the several houses on the complex. Rich, Doug, Merrill, who came down to join us from New York. Matt's starting closest to this beautiful house. Matt, this is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, real nice. I love the porch wraps all the way around. But right in the front, Matt said he's got himself a coin. And let's see what he's got. Oh, it's a wheat, wheat penny, I'm assuming? Yep. Because if you called me over for Memorial Penny, I, <laughs> I wouldn't believe you the rest of the day. It's a I late one, can't I think. See, yeah, it's 50-something. I can't see the date. But the best thing about this, Matt, is when you pop a wheat penny, it looks like you're about four inches or so deep. Yeah. That means that the yard was probably never hit before. I know some areas on the complex have been detected before, but the owner said he didn't think the yard was, and that is a That's, good sign. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Awesome job. Great start. Let's keep going. All right, thanks. All right, Merrill, I don't know if you've ever seen Rich before, but Rich finds the lion share when we go out. Because and we're over there. We were trying to talk oh. to the next house to yeah. make try to get something. I was doing the same as him, so. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Rich had a look on his face when he came up to me like he found something amazing. So It, it could be. I don't think I have one, and I don't really know what it is. You know, All right, I, let's take a look. It's right here, though. Oh, man. That's oh, a large set. Yeah. That's a large set. It looks very well, thin. Well, it's not a large. Yeah, I was going to say. Not. Is it a half set? Oh, it's KG1, KG. it looks like. Yeah. I, I thought it was a di weird size. I thought it was something. No, I think, I think it's a. Oh, it's in nice shape, Rich. Yeah, it's in. Wow. It has really nice shape, but. Yeah. I thought it was small, but man. Well, we knew this spot. Wow, that's incredible detail. Can you see that, Matt? Yeah, it's crazy. Dude, we thought it was a clad quarter because of the detail. Well, they do sometimes yeah. look like yeah. a clad quarter. Did you even brush this, or is this how it came out? I brushed it slightly. Wow. That's pretty see much what, what it might be. Let's yeah. brush it slightly more slightly I, I <laughs> and really get a good look at <laughs> Ever it. Ever so slightly. That's amazing. I didn't want to call you over for a call. No, I appreciate it. That's you may have did. hit it with your yeah. shovel a little bit too. I but did. Yeah, just a tiny bit, just a kiss. It's character. Let's brush it down a little bit and we'll get a real nice uh, super duper close up. All right, there's Rich's coin. And this is an amazing King George the first. And this one is the Woods Hibernia. The Woods Hibernia basically was King George the first coins that were made in Ireland. Hibernia means Ireland in like Latin. And it's called a Woods Hibernia because it was designed and made by a guy named William Woods. And these coins came over here because we had so many Irish immigrants, you know, in the early 1700s trying to escape uh, persecution over there, you know, part of the pilgrimage of all, all the colonists. The backside has a picture. I don't know if that's Britannia or just a woman, I'm not sure. And it's hard to see, but there is a harp behind her. And the date is up in the top right corner. And even though it looks like it's a 1725 or 26, it's actually 1723. So almost uh, 300 years old. That's incredible. I wonder what year George Washington was born. This coin could possibly predate the birth of George Washington. That's so cool. Yeah. Incredible job, Rich. Thank Hopefully you. we're going to get some more of them. I think there's definitely got potential when you look at the beautiful properties up there and we got access, like I said, to the one next to it too. So we're gonna spread out and hopefully kill it today. All right, Doug, I got the first decent thing of the day for me at least. I've got two memorial pennies, which is an okay start. But take a look at this under this leaf. Here's my fine. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a little clock key, I'm gonna guess. Or, or could be a uh, cabinet door lock 69 it looks it almost looks 70. victorian doesn't it yeah it, with this extra little ring in there yeah. 
Well, I'm going to clean it up and try to get a good look Looks at nice. it. It feels weird. It feels weird, Doug. What, what's weird about it? Like it doesn't... It doesn't, it doesn't feel like brass. Oh no, it sure doesn't. It almost feels- But it's gotta be. Well, oh, I don't have my magnet. Oh, my magnet fell off. I don't have mine either. All right, let us uh, let me brush it down and we'll take a look at it. It's some sort of an interesting key, but my magnet fell off my shovel. All right, hang on. Nice. All right, Merrill's checking out my key. It's cool, isn't it, Merrill? Uh, yeah, how old do you think this is? I think it's from 1911. You know, give or take a month or two. That's a good- <laughs> 100 years <laughs> yeah <That's... laughs> but but you know what's cool about it merrill is i found i found my magnet which is a rare earth magnet and look yeah. at that it just like flew up yes yeah, well that wasn't the magic part I, I think the magic <laughs> part i was referring to was that it's iron yeah. where normally they're brass so i think the high tone i had is from running over the hole you know when you run over like a, a, a ring like that it'll throw up a high tone because uh, that's weird that an iron key, I mean, this probably, if I swung over it on the ground, would be very low here and then maybe a right. blip when I right. go over that. So I'll recheck the hole and I didn't do a very good job cleaning it up yet at all. I was just kind of passing it around. But that's a pretty cool find. It's the first interesting relic of the day. A great, so, uh, uh, great shape for uh, iron as well. Oh, that's... on a scale of one to 10, I'm yeah. gonna give this a, um, like a seven for me. You know, I appreciate things very easily now. <laughs> awesome find. Great job. So a super cool key for me. I'm going to pass it around so everyone can kind of see it, Merrill, if you'd like to check out the key. Yeah. And while you're doing that, you know what I'm going to do, Merrill? What are you going to do? I don't know if you know what these are. I think they're called bananas. <laughs> well, that's true. To you, they're banana. Right. To me, it's a magical mystery gift to the ground. Right. Who in turn will reward us all well, with I've good heard prizes that. all I've day. I've heard if you plant a banana, it just, it turns. It does. It grows an incredible beanstalk right. banana type tree. I've seen that in Super Mario. <laughs> so banana in the hole. And this will give us luck all day long so we find some incredible things. Let's keep going, brother. Ground needs potassium. <laughs> Doug's on his knees. He was just swinging the machine on his knees. It's a new technique. <laughs> but he said he's got was, something shiny. I was trying to see what it was like to be dwarf. <laughs> I remember him, yeah. Tim Conway. That's why I brought it up. I, okay, I, I, you're right. I guess you did remember him. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, you are down there. Well, yeah, and I, I got it out of the hole. It looks, it like looks a, silver. I agree. It's a it's like a feather, a feather charm. But I think there's Ooh. more there. I think there's more there. Is that a clasp? Yeah, right yeah. Here? it's like oh, a, yeah, there a necklace is. charm. Yeah. What makes you think there's more there? Because I, I was getting multiple signals. Now, there is a lot of iron in here. I've pulled a lot of nails out of here. but Oh, there, Mer Merrill's got silver too at the exact same time. He just yelled it out. Did you hear him? No. I yeah, he just yelled out silver. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, Merrill's got silver too. Okay. Doug's, I'm sure this is silver. That looked, and it looks like a, a piece of a charm bracelet. I You're agree. Right. Well, let's spray yours down. We'll get a good look All at right. it. And then we'll also go over and take a look and see what Merrill's got. Yep. All right, let's see. Now, Doug, in good fashion, most of the water is on my fingertips. Only a few droplets. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can well, feel... I wanted to clean your see fingers. See how this side so of my fingers dry? There we go. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. Oh, there you go. I'm not sure if that did a whole lot, but... Typical Doug fashion. <laughs> Doug is known for <laughs> missing his stream. The errant sprayer. <laughs> I do have the cleanest fingers, though, when you, you spray do. something. You do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a super cool piece, Doug. I, I can't like it. see, because it's kind of small, if there's a marking on it, but I'm sure yeah. that you've got yourself a nice piece of sterling. Way yeah. to go, Dougie. And, and hopefully maybe a couple more in there. Well, um, at least you got one. Let's see if we can put the whole headdress together. All right. Well done. There you go. Thanks. All right, Merrill said he's got something good. He said he's got a piece of silver. Now, when I met Merrill this morning, I said, Merrill, what do you find up in New York? And he says, uh, well, I find a lot of Mercury dimes. Mercury's find me. So uh, Mercury's Mercury, find Mercury, him. Mercury, Merrill. Well, so I'm thinking maybe Murky Merrill or something like that. Yeah, yeah you can't do a whole Mercury. Well, he is Murky. A Mets fan. Yeah, Murky. Murky. Yeah, Murky. he's a Mets fan. Yeah. Murky <laughs> Meddy Merrill. Yep, yep. Well, let's see. He said he's got a silver coin. The one that's been eluding me is Cap Bust. And this. Well, that eludes a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not even a Merc. It's a. Uh, it's a rosy. rosy. Oh, it's yeah. a rosy. Is it even silver? Yeah, it's silver. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I can see uh, one nine six. It's probably. I think it's going to be a zero because it definitely is silver. Well, not the Mercury yet. Rosies find me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. But right next to where Merrill just got this, Rich dug that seventeen twenties coin. So yep. we're all through the centuries. Let's clean it up and we'll come back and all get right. a good look at it.
All right, there's Merrill's dime, and it is 1960. It might only be a Roosevelt dime, Merrill, but he's got incredible detail. I can even see the hairline in his hair from where he brushes it. I think he used a comb. I think he did. Yeah, that's not a brush. Those are comb lines. No, no, no. The second piece of silver on the day at the exact same time Doug got his feather silver. So way to go. Awesome one-two punch, brother. I hope you get some more of them. Thanks, buddy. Well, I got a good high 30s here, and I wasn't sure what it was going to be. I got a key. It looks like a house key. Bayport, Minnesota on one side. And A.W. on the other side. A.W. You know what I loved? A.W. Root Beer. Reminds me of A.W. Root Beer. I could really go for one. Nothing so smooth as A.M.W. Nothing so smooth. Merrill, they got A and W root beer up in New York, or is that a regional? Of course, ah, classic. That yeah. foamy froth on there. Yeah, man. Just looking at this makes me thirsty. All right, we are spread out. Merrill just got his first wheat penny of the day, I think, from the '30s. Yep. And Rich said coin. Let's Some see what he's got. He is. He is. I don't know what it is. I could give him a broomstick with a stud finder taped to the end, and he's going to find a lot of stuff. Let's see what he's got. Up, oh, I see. Is that a silver quarter, or yeah. is that another large cent? That's a silver. I think it's a barber. No, really. Nice. Your second one ever. Second one. Because I was with you when you you got your first one ever. Yep. Here, I got spray. If you need it. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Let me see it before you spray it. I went to the left thinking you guys killed this spot when I was talking to the homeowner. I guess I shouldn't have. Slow. I'm going so slow. I think it's 03. Wow, look at that black patina on the back. Here, you want to spray it? Wow, that looks sharp. Do you remember the year on your first one? 1911. All right, so you're creeping back. Yeah. Not quite an 1800s barber. Wow, I love the dark patina on it. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank man. you. I don't have one yet. No, you have a barber half though, don't you? Yes. But not a, it's basically almost the same design at least. Oh, hold on guys. Oh, don't uh -oh. even tell me you got a uh -oh. spill. He had a large scent spill a week or so ago, Merrill. A large scent spill? Yep. What's in the clump? That doesn't sound like a coin to me. It's that a, is a... Yeah, it sounds like a little you nail. Know. Oh, look at that though. Oh, a little furniture tack nail, yeah. Yep, a nice little furniture tack one. Well, that's a nice, for, not, it's not as impressive as the barber quarter, but um, impressive nice that it pulled it, uh, you know, within range of an iron object. All right, Rich stood up and swung over his hole and has another 49, which is another quarter signal. So he's opening the hole up a little bit. While he's looking for that, we did spray his quarter down. Look how nice that thing is. I love the patina on it. Oh, oh, uh oh, hold on. Hold on. Did it fall? Oh, yeah, it fell. Oh. And it's a buffalo nickel. Oh, really? Well, that's not a 49. No, it's not. I just got something interesting over here. Sorry, guys. Oh, Merrill's got something next to us, too. I got it. He's got another. Merrill, look at this spill that's unfolding. Whoa. And fishing for a 49 in the same hole, he just pulled out a buffalo nickel, which is a mid tone. Uh, a so wheat penny. He, oh, a wheat penny in the clump. Bowl. Look at that spill. Oh, he's got more. Ooh. He's got more. He's got more. Son of a gun. I have a feeling you got more silver in there. Oh, he had a four. Oh! oh! Son of a gun. You know it right away. It, it's a, it's a Washington. Yeah. Oh, it's a Washington. It's George, yep. 34. Oh. Wow, early one. Oh. oh. Wants to go back in its hole. Holy cow. Recheck it, Rich. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, no, I think you were just pushing down. Uh, maybe. I'll have to swing over uh, it. He's going to swing over it. Wow, so far, a Washington 34, a Barber, a Buffalo Nickel, and a Wheat. <laughs> we got to clean all these up. Let's see if he's got another signal in there. And Merrill, I, I think, think... had something good right behind him. That's it. That's it? That's it. All right, let's clean these up, and we'll come back for a close-up, and I'm going to go over and see what Merrill's got, too. Killer. I paint it yourself, Legend. I don't know if it's lead. I, I oh, Rich, he's like got uh, something cool. I can see it. Yeah, it's a horse. 
It's like a lead. lead. Oh, is it lead? Lead or cotton. Look how thick it is, too. I thought it was going to be like a army man lead, but it's so thick. It's almost like came off of like a carousel or something. You know, know, it's really crazy too, Meryl. This is how Doug sits down, that exact position. <laughs> yeah, it's really creepy. You got to see him do it. Oh, man. Wicked cool find. This was a high tone? This was a high tone, 83 uh, on a scale of 99. Wow, that's super cool. All right, let's clean yours up too, and we'll get a good look at it. Too bad his tail broke off, but yeah. hey, I know the feeling. Yep, yep. <laughs> cool. All right, there's Meryl's horse. It's got beautiful detail on it. The mane is still together. Both his ears are still on there, which I'm kind of surprised only because his tail broke off and all four of his feet broke off. But somehow those super fragile ears managed to stay on there. I heard the Romans do that to statues. Maybe the Romans came sacking Philadelphia. <laughs> yep. And it's got a lot of weight to it and there is a hole going through it. So I don't know if oh, it doesn't go all the way through actually, just a little bit of it. So I'm not really sure what it came off of, but that's an incredible find. And at least now you know that uh, you're not out here just doing some uh, horse and pony show. That's right. Awesome time, brother. Well said. Thank you. All right, there is Rich's coin spill. And look at what a beautiful spill that is. He's got a 1927 wheat penny. He's got a 1936 buffalo nickel. How often do we get buffaloes with a full date like that? Almost never. Yep, beautiful. A 1934 George Jefferson quarter with a D mint mark. So you know he's moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> and then to top it off, the 03 Barber Quarter with incredible toning on there, especially on the back. You can see just slight different tones of patina and incredible detail on that, a second Barber Quarter ever. Way to go, man. That's an amazing spill. I was glad I was there to see some of it come out of the ground live. Yeah. But you got the best one by yourself. Real cool. Killer job. Thanks. All right, nice high tone right there. It's bouncing a little bit, but it's deep. That's why. You don't even see a depth on my depth indicator because it's that deep. And you hear it doesn't pinpoint real well either because of its depth. This could be something really good. Let's dig it up and see. Oh man, Rich, that was incredible. Yeah, I'm so happy I walked over. I was trying, I had a good signal in my in my hole, Meryl, and I'm using the pinpointer. I was like right on it, but my battery's dying. So you hear it make this weird sound? Yeah, oh, I hate it when it does that. So like it would like, shut off and I couldn't quite find it. I thought it was in a scoop. I reached down and picked up my hand and this coin fell out, Ooh. and I didn't even know where it was exactly because my pinpointer died mid scoop. You know, they it could hear died you all the way over in Pennsylvania. I can't help it, Doc. I mean, come on. <laughs> I see. I think another KG. I see dirt. I see a lot of dirt. Thin, it's de right? definitely dirty here. It looks thin. It's thin, but it's bigger it's than bigger his. Than I don't think his. it's going to be a one. Let me brush it. I don't want to rub it around in case it's a rare one. Early larger. And I'm going to come right back. Hang on a second. Awesome. So there's my copper, not far from where Rich got his KG-1. I'm about maybe 25, 30 feet away. This is a KG-2. You can see him facing to the other direction. I'm using the Peron so that you can light it all up. But right there, you can see KG facing towards my fingertips. You can see the back of his hair, very clear. I can't see any of the writing around the edge. It's corroded. And when we flip it over, I can't see anything on here. It's all corroded somewhere on here. Up there she is, right there. I can see Britannia. There's her head up at the top. It's hard to see, but I'll see if I can do an overlay picture next to it so you can make it out. And sometimes once you see it, if I pull it out of the light, you might be able to see it better. In this case, I cannot. But incredible coin. This is going to be like 1750s, 1740s, somewhere in that time period. So not quite as old as Rich's, but still 260 year old coin. Number two on the day in the super old range, incredible. All right, I'm in the far backyard. You can see the old house right there. It goes back to the 1700s, the one next to it, which we didn't even get into that yard yet. There's Doug out there still by the tree. Matt, I'm in the far back and I heard a lot of noise because right in the back, not far behind the yard is the Delaware River. 
and there's some beach area up there, some rocky parts of the shore. And George Washington did his famous cross of the Delaware, not far from where we are, about maybe 10 miles or so up the road. So we might go try the beach later too. And there's farm fields behind Rich over there that are currently planted, but another month or so that's gonna be open and those are pretty vast. So beach, farms, and yards all in the same spot. Come on, that's a winner. Well, in a perfect world right now, you should be looking at a large copper disc that Matt found all dirty in the ground. But for whatever reason, the camera, it just didn't record it. So what you're gonna look at is a cleaned up copper circle that Matt found in the ground. But after we cleaned it, as cool as it was, it led to like three or four more incredible finds on top of it. So sorry, Matt, for the technical issues, but let's jump right in and see what the heck he got. All right, Rich, we cleaned it up and, and I thought that mark in the middle right there was like some scratches or maybe a Roman numeral or something. But when you turn it this way, Rich, it's the old style War of 1812 Eagle. What? If you see his wings out and is looking over his shoulder right there, wow. if I catch it in that angle. Wow, that's so cool. So this could be military and it's going to be 200 years old and look how nice if i catch it right there you're not kidding all of the leaves oh at the my bottom. god that's awesome and you can clearly see the eagle in the middle well i don't want to say clearly because it is a little a little rough but that's a super old one matt nice. 200 plus years yeah. old yeah possibly military and got great detail shame the shank is sheared off completely but killer fine man lots of age to place you gotta awesome. get lucky and get on it awesome well nice. done brother Wow, right next, you're right next to where Matt got his button, Doug. Is it the same size? Uh, no, much smaller, but probably every bit as old. Uh, you can see uh, uh, there was writing and there was a circle. And it come down here, I'm gonna hunker down. Yeah, that was what, two inches? Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, it wasn't deep at all. I can't tell if the shank is sheared off or smushed down. Well, the way I was hacking with the shovel, it could be sheared off. No, nah, but it would be a fresh shear. Oh, uh, that's true. I that that actually looks like it's been bent, bent over. Yeah, and I see at the bottom, you have a little bit of Aretha Franklin coming through. Oh, really? Yeah, she's on there. She's popular on buttons, I've heard. Oh, yeah. she is. Yeah. Well, she gets some RESPCT from me. Yeah. Nice button, Doug. Uh, nice wreath on the back, maybe a shank, and there could be an image on the, oh, I see a wing. A wing. I see a wing How on the front. How do you see a wing? It, I, I, I do see something. There's an eagle. Oh, yeah. There's an eagle. I see something right there. Yep, it's an eagle. I wonder if it's going to be the same War of 1812 style that he has, because I think it's too thick for general service. Right. Oh, now we got to brush it, because I saw a wing. I'm having a hard time seeing it now, but it was definitely on there. Okay. Hang on. Let's give it a cleanup. All right, Matt seemed to open the floodgates with the buttons because Doug just found one. He's still cleaning it. And then at the same time, Rich yelled out button. So let's take a look. Three buttons in a row. Wasn't even that deep. Yours looks like nickel size, maybe. Yeah, that's nickel size. Doug's clean his because he might have an eagle on his. I didn't brush it or anything. You're yet. in the shade, so I can't tell if there's... Oh, I do see some very, very faint writing in the middle. But they're pretty clear. They're Holy really cow. <laughs> All right, well, mid -tone, mid -tone. let's clean up Rich's button too. I'm gonna go back over and check on Doug's and we'll see if he got anything fancy with the buttons. So there's Doug's button and he tried to clean it in the field. We can only clean it so well. And even with the light looking all around, I don't see an eagle nail. Sometimes just the way the dirt's on yeah. there or the raised corrosion it tricks you like when you look at the clouds and you see a, a monkey's butt but i see a pepperoni <laughs> pizza you know i think i saw a monkey's butt remind me never to come over and have pizza <laughs> at your house um yeah Doug, you well, can hey. see the the, the um, artwork and let me see on the outside back. of the flashlight uh-oh can you uh-oh uh-oh either All right he just found the holy grail i think he's walking away he's doing the mic drop he's doing the mic drop Let's see. He's doing the mic drop. What have I been wanting? Not a crotal belt. Um, a, a cat bus dollar. Oh, uh oh, it's another silver dime. What is it? It's not a silver dime. Oh, it's a real. 
Doug, it's a yeah. real. It's and it's yeah. it's my no. first one. Congratulations! Half it's a half real, and oh, look no. at that, Rich. You've got incredible detail on it. Yeah, incredible. I Doug, actually, those... take the light away if you don't okay. mind, because there's it's it's really has a nice relief on both sides. Oh, it's man, Carlos the third. The guy with the big nose. It's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> it potentially could be 1776. Rich, hang on. Go ahead. Your first. He's first or ever. I don't want to even rub it, Rich. Um, I'm going to hand it to you for a cleanup. I think it might be 1774. Oh. And Rich, I've seen a lot of reals come out of the ground. This might be the nicest one I've ever seen. Look at the detail. I can see the bow. I can see all his hair and the pillars on the back. And that was a mid-tone, Matt. That was another mid-tone. So right yeah. Matt so was a mid-tone yeah, also. Be because of the size. Yeah. yeah. All right, let me have Rich clean up. We're going to come right back. His first one ever. Man, right. way to go. There's Rich's Riel. His first one ever. And he got a beautiful one. Carlos III, Charles III, 1783. And you can see all of the naysayers' letters the reading, everything, great. I can even see his eyeball. <laughs> it's faint, but I can see it. Yeah. I mean, you got really good detail. Yeah, it is. And the back, let's see. Yep, you can see the Mexico City over on the left-hand side, the M with the circle of it, over top of it. I mean, this was the world's currency, you know, yeah. wherever they spoke Spanish before America. Well, they, actually, this was actually after America, 1783. But this was still the predominant. We didn't have a mint yet, so we were still on the uh, on the currency. But great coin, Rich. Great so condition. Cool. Half real. Now you got to get yourself a one, two, four, and eight, and you'll have the whole <laughs> set. They might all be here. You never know. Maybe. Killer fine, man. Uh, Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Oh man, this Merrill might be good luck so far. What an awesome start to this property. Me with a KG2, Doug with the silver feather charm, Matt, the War of 1812 military button, Merrill with the silver rosy, but Rich, oh my goodness, the Barber Quarter silver spill, the 1723 Woods Hibernia half penny, and then his first ever half real. Oh my goodness, come on, Rich. And I say the beginning because this was just the first house. I showed you earlier in the video, there was a house next door. And when I tell you that house was even better, it was even better. More copper coins, a handful of silver coins, old silver. I'm talking 200 year old silver. And we also got a piece of gold. We don't get gold very often, but we got a big fat piece of gold. Wait till you see it next week will be the house next door. And it was incredible. And of course, if you guys didn't pick one up yet, the official quarter hoarder hat is now on sale. That's right, you can email me at quarterhoarderyahoo.com and grab either the camo hat with the quarter hoarder patch or the black hat with quarter hoarder crew embroidered on the front. They're 25 bucks each and each one ships with a special gift just from us to you. Not only will you be the coolest guy on the block, you're also gonna be an official quarter hoarder supporter. And as always, if you need a metal detector, pinpointer, sand scoop, shovel, anything hobby related, shoot me an email, quarterhoarderyahoo.com. Let me know where you live, what your budget is, and what kind of terrain you plan on hunting. I'll help you pick out the best machine for your budget so you can get out and find some of the incredible things like we find every single week. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. It's a hobby of champions. My boys, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy hunting, and I will see you on the next one. Later.